Hey, Mike, this is specifically addressing you tonight. Uh, you know, we can sit and go round and round and round about, you know, the chicken or the egg or who did this, who certified who to certify. You know, it all has to start somewhere. Um, when a professor writes a curriculum at a university, um, he goes out and does the research and he compiles all of the data that he can possibly get from multiple sources and references. Uh, have you ever written a research paper? Uh, I think that what what grade is that that we write a research paper? Fifth grade? Fourth grade? I don't know when we start writing research papers. I wrote enough of them that I can't remember the first one that I ever wrote. But just to kind of give you an explanation of how that works in case you never wrote a research paper. Um, these professors will go out and get references from, and we'll just use an example, OSHA. Um, other colleagues in their industry. Other colleagues in the industry that they may be researching. See how that works, Mike? Um, that's how it's done. Um, at the highest level of education. We've done nothing but copy that. Um, for you to say that these people don't exist and aren't involved, uh, it's not hurtful to me. Um, I'm, I'm actually feeling poorly because so many of these people have helped us and we don't have their names up on the website like I'd like to have, so it could be completely transparent. I'd love to mention their names right now, but I would forget some, which that would mean that I would disrespect others, um, and I don't want to do that. But these are well-respected people in our industry and some outside of our industry, um, and some that you know we just sought help from uh, because we thought that they could provide input for us um, in these test modules. Uh, you know. This is what the UAMCC is doing, um, and this is how things are created. This is how the start of it happens. Is it the end? Is it the? Are we done with it? Um, we foresee an ongoing process, and the way we set the curriculum up, the way we set the modules up, the way we're going to go about doing the third party, um, the the actual third party education. It doesn't mean that we're taking anyone. It doesn't mean necessarily that we're going to eventually take anyone. But we're, you know, we're, we're open-minded and we're looking at all of the sources right now because there's no, you know, there's no data that we can go to and says, you know, this is the best pressure washing school. This is the best deck restoration school. Um, no one's compiled that. Um, so you kind of know one of those other forms that somebody filling out after they've completed their certification requirements and they wind up having to actually take the test um, and then they've passed it before they can actually get their certification certificate okay that they're done they have to fill out a form of reference for that educator. Um, I'm not going to list the things that's on that are on that. I mean, I think that they're posted up in the uh, membership area at the UMCC. Um, I'm not. It's not top secret. I can probably get you one if you want to take a look at it. Um, but it's just a questionnaire, a survey, and we're hoping that through that survey, we can raise the bar of whoever the instructors are or whoever the educational groups are. Um, of course, if it's an outside source like OSHA training or something like that, you know, if it, if it was an independent entity that did it, yeah, we would want to know a little reference. Was the instructor good? You know, that way if we had other uh, members that were in that same area or if that OSHA training camp was moving uh, because OSHA does put on camps all over the place, that we could say, oh yeah, Mr. Smith, you know, we've gotten good feedback on him, and we could potentially give a new member looking for training uh, a, a win situation, rather than if, you know, Mr. Smith's training said it sucks, well, then we're obviously not going to repeatedly, if, if we're getting that kind of feedback, 
we're not going to suggest that to our members. Um, all of these things are meant to raise the bar on what we're doing. We've thought this process out. We've made mistakes through the process. Um, I'll, be, I'll be clear with you on it. You know, the standard of five years or more before you can opt out of any of that stuff, maybe it should be higher. We started with five. The one year that you can't even get certified until you've had one year uh, time in your craft, that I would like to be two years. Some guys want it to be three years. We know we're probably going to raise it up. We started the bar a little bit lower. Uh, you know, that's just how that's just how it was. Now, when you're when you're under the five year mark, we've decided that if you take an online test, um, somewhere along the line, you're going to have to take a physical test at some point in time. Within, the, within a two-year time frame, which I don't think is unreasonable, and that's going to be required for their certification as far as research. Now, we don't have the research conditions completely ironed out because we've only been given certifications out technically for only a few months. So we don't really have the entire program for recertification done yet. We're working on it, and uh, we're we're gonna it, it's gonna come along. Um, some of the things on research are definitely going to be uh, keeping up with uh, manufacturer bulletins on um, you know our products, equipment, things like that. Uh, obviously, in the uh, deck industry, it's a big thing because sometimes there's bulletins out there on bad staining conditions or changes or things like that. Or even just changes in laws as far as wash water control, um, you know, other things that may that may come up. Uh, I saw one. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but it came. It, a bulletin came over the other night that I think you know this is something that every contract cleaner should be knowing about. And I can, I, I might remember it. I may not. But these are the kind of things that would create an ongoing educational thing because. We've already decided that, you know, a guy that's five, ten years into his craft is probably going to better his craft purely by, you know, obviously repetitiveness and doing it and, you know, turning his craft into an art form. As he goes on down the road, he gets better and better. Well, that's what we that's what we hope happens. Obviously, there's always a continuing education process to things that change and doing things differently in the industry. Sometimes things change. There are no real major changes uh, normally uh, that, that are real game changers, but you know, we've got to, as an industry, keep up with some form of continuing education. And those can be simple things, simple things. I mean, it could be attending the national convention. It could be attending, you know, local um, associate member roundtables or even contract around tables. Um, it really doesn't matter. It could be something not even related to uh, the industry. It could be in safety or it could be in ladder or anything like that. But if these things, you know, if this doesn't explain it to you a little bit better, you know, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't think that bantering back and forth, uh, you calling me a liar, uh, me calling you Barney Five, uh, you know, it's, it's really not going to really serve any purpose. Uh, for anyone um, listening to it. So if you need uh, any more assistance, pick up the phone. You know my number. I tried to call you today. Any This video helps anybody else understand a little bit better. That's awesome too. Um, Ron Musgraves, just a contractor. Uh, these are my own personal thoughts, not the views of the entire UAMCC. Uh, this is a, the best I can explain it to you, and sometimes these things are changing without even myself as the president knowing, uh, because these committees are working independently, um, and they actually are working. That's what the really cool thing about it is, is we have a lot of volunteers um, that are independently working, and it's been a great program, and it's been a lot of fun to work with these people, and I really enjoy I enjoy all of them, working with all of them. It's been, it's been great. Uh, I just hope that we can get moving forward 
And, you know, the people that are so negative about this can start, be po start being positive about this because there's nothing bad about this. And there are so many people involved in this that I don't think any of you guys even realize it at this point. Um, we do have, um, uh, I was told, and I don't know the membership numbers, but I'm proud to say that they're posted. And really, you can just go there and look yourself uh, and determine what, what the membership number is. Uh, I think that we're going to try to progress on having a correct number each week rather than every month. Uh, obviously, when we talk about the new members in a month, we're going to address the total that we got with inside that month. And believe it or not, there's nothing dead about this organization. It's booming. There's members coming in every day. And every day there's growth. And we are excited. And it's becoming a better association every time that we have any dialogue and we learn something or we hear something and we know that we can change it and make it better. Um, I, it's like I told you before. There was a post you made earlier. And we made we actually made that better within within 24 hours. And again, Mike, I want to thank you for that because you're right. We don't always see these things that could when we're on the inside from the people that are on the outside. So we appreciate the feedback. We just appreciate that if folks would just keep it, uh, you know, keep keep some integrity with yourself. Um, there's no one here trying to cheat anyone. There's no one trying to, uh, you know, fraud anybody. All that kind of talk is just, it, it's ridiculous. And I won't stand for it as the president of the association. These people that have put their sweat, blood, and tears into this thing, and the people that are continuing to do it don't deserve that. They deserve better. They deserve to be raised up put on a platform, and thank for what they've done. And that's the only reason that I, that I want to run this association is to help people and to give those people that satisfaction of serving others and the joy and everything that they can get from it as a, as a, as a contract cleaner. Helping people, assisting them. You know, guys will go all the time, why do you do this stuff? Um, I got a couple guys, I won't tell you their names, but I'll tell you this, I get a gas out of it when they tell me they nailed a $100,000 contract, and it's something that I told them. I even get a bigger gas out of it when they tell me they turned down a quarter of a million dollar contract because they didn't think they were ready for it, but it was in their hands. To me, it's fun. I like it. I like helping these young guys. I don't even like helping the old guys. Sometimes it's tough because they don't want to listen, but I like helping them. I want to help people. I want to help them. I want to help their families. That's what I do. I've been doing this for so long, and yes, I'll say it right in this video, I've made so much money doing this that it doesn't matter to me anymore. Uh, and that's a fact. Uh, anybody who wants to dispute that, go right ahead because I know what the truth is. And uh, I guess... There's that old cliche, I'll laugh all the way to the bank. <laughs> so this is why Rod Musgraves does this. You know what? You want to call it self-serving? Call me self-serving all you want. Because you know what? When I do it, I love it, and it's what I do. I love helping people, and no one's going to stop me from doing it. Rod Musgraves. I am the president of UAMCC, but this was my own message, not the orgs.